Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Hometown Cable. Our program is called What's Going On Here? My name is Bob Venn, all by himself this morning, with the camera and the mic at this time. I'm in Littleton, New Hampshire, what I guess is sometimes called the Mother House for the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The sisters who are... Who, and who have been and still are at uh, St. Mary's in Champlain, came to Champlain in 1906, 90 years. And in, there's going to be a reunion on the 9th and 10th of all the former graduates uh, and people who attended St. Mary's over the years. And uh, as, a, as a result of that, we've come to the mother house a couple of weeks early to see some of the sisters who won't be able to return to St. Mary's because of illness and so forth. And we're going to be talking with some of them this morning. My wife, Teresa, is with me. Also, Florence Carter, Mrs. Armin Carter, and Doris Picard. Uh, Mrs. Arthur Picard is here also. So they'll be probably talking with the sisters, and I'll be taking pictures. We're at the top of a beautiful hill Former residence, I understand, and all I know is this was supposedly given to the sisters many years ago uh, as a gift, and they make it their uh, residence here for the mother house. We'll be looking at more as we get inside. Please stay with us. <laughs> a couple of our hosts already meeting us at the door. We'll find out who they are when we get inside. If we don't know at this point, <laughs> we don't know at this point. Not from this distance yet. Oh, this is Sister Teresa. Okay, I might be. You still not know me. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta help me. Hi, sisters, and uh, we'll be right there. Okay. We've come inside now. And the first thing I gave you was the wrong name for the order. It's the Daughters of the Charity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, right. and not the Sisters, as I said outside. And this uh, sister, your name? Sister Lucille. Right. In your capacity here, sister? I'm coordinator of the, of the community in this house. What does that mean? Like what you used to call superior. Oh, oh you're the boss. What? The big boss, huh? Is that what that means? Not Just the big boss. boss. <laughs> and also, this is not the mother house. It's called the provincial house. Provincial house, house for, right. Ameri for our American communities. Okay. So you told us off camera, you have the order in France, right. which is where it started. Right. And then in the United States and Canada. Right. And then you have outposts. What do you call your... We have our missions in Brazil in Tahiti, uh -huh. in uh, South Africa, Basutoland, uh, now called Lesotho, and um, Madagascar, and the, the West Coast, the Gold Coast, and Togo, and, and uh, Benin. Okay, so headquarters for United States Order is right here, right here in, Littleton. in Littleton. So the first thing people are going to say is that these are wealthy sisters, they got this beautiful place. The There's a reason for that, right? Right. And this is the man right here. That's the cause of it. Okay. Mr. Birch was the son of Mr. Moran, who owned this place at the turn of the century. And uh, when his stepfather died, when Mr. Moran and, uh, died, he received this estate, which um, was about 450 acres. And Mr. Uh, Birch, uh, when he was dying, wanted to give this estate to the Catholic Church in honor of his mother, who had become a Catholic at the age of 55. And um, he contacted uh, Cardinal Spellman in New York and offered him this property. And because it was too far, the the uh, Cardinal Spellman sort of um, said to him, I, it's too far, it's too far for um, my means and for our needs here in New York City, so why don't you offer it to the Bishop of Manchester, New Hampshire. So it was Bishop Primo, and um, this was given to him in the late 59 or 60. 
and it was just stood there. Nobody did anything about it. And um, he, when it was offered to him, he said also it was too far. He he didn't really want it. So when he saw that. Um, Mother Mary Assumption, who was our provincial mother at the time, went down to see the bishop one day and asked him, uh, spoke about different business that she went down for, and then he asked her, just um, were there any problems, with, was there any other questions that she had? And she said to him, I'd like to have a new headquarters for our, our postulants and novices because they're out in Colebrook, and it's it's a real factory up there with the high school, with Graham School, boarding school for bo boys and girls. And we'd like to get, and we have the novitiate there also. So when that was proposed to him, he said, "Well, why on your way back to Little to uh, Colebrook? Why don't you stop in Littleton and go up Grove Street? And on at the end of Grove Street, there'll be the caretaker's house and ask him to see the Morin estate also called Birch um, uh, the Birch house or it was called at the time Hills Acre Hill Acres okay mm -hmm. and so she stopped and they showed him this house this part of the house this first part of the house was a, a lovely home and they, uh, um, she wrote to the bishop soon after and said that it would be ideal. <laughs> it would be ideal. Had to shock she her. Fell, <laughs> she fell in love with the scenery more than, you know, the house uh -huh. itself, but it could be adapted to mm -hmm. our needs. So this is what happened. And, and we got this in 1961. They gave us the house. They told us to take the land that we needed or that we would like. And we said, well, we just want a little privacy so we take some of the forest on the all around mm -hmm. and the rest of it of the 400 acres we wouldn't need so it turned out to be like 73 acres approximately terrific it's been very good for you it to has this been point very very good mm -hmm. and since then in 75 76 we built the first addition which took in the large chapel the large dining room because by that time many of our sisters were starting to retire and they had no place to go. So this came to be the retirement home, also the infirmary, mm -hmm. and eventually the administration moved here. And in 89, there was another addition added on because there were so many sick. And um, then we had to build a, a room for the archives. So all of that mm -hmm. came about be gradually. But we got the 61, then added on in 75, and added on in 89. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sister. We'll take a short break and come back. You're watching Hometown Cable, and we're in the uh, the home, the lovely home residence, uh, n uh, nursing home, uh, everything, retirement home of the daughters. sisters, the daughters. Say that for me again. The daughters of the charity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So you've been practicing. Uh, you've done very well. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of the sisters that were formerly at St. Mary's, and this is Sister Rita of Jesus. Um, I'm, other people are talking. Tell me again. Sister Rita of Jesus. Okay, how long were you at St. Mary's? I arrived in St. Mary's in 1929. It was my first mission. I had left the novitiate, and that's where I went. I loved the place. I started teaching in high school. And I was there until 1935, where I was sent to the missions. I remember in March of that year, 1935, uh, we had started to hear about missions, but we were not sure. And I asked my class to pray for a certain intention. And they said, will you tell us what it was if you get it? I said, yes, I will. So in June, I told them I was going to go to Africa. And they said, if we had known that you were praying for that, we would not have prayed. But I left for 14 years, and I came back in 49, 
and was stationed in Colebrook, which we were just starting. Uh -huh. After that, I kept there, I stayed there until 1956, where I was transferred to Champlain again as superior and, um, what, what? What else did I do there? <laughs> Mostly that. Mostly that. Mostly that, huh? Yes. No. But at that time, the high school was built, and uh, the boarding school had to be closed. The bishop said there was not enough place for the boarders, so we closed the, the boarding school. And finally, Mr. Finn, you were there when we started <laughs> to have the field, the uh, baseball field. But we had, we needed one of the plots next to the church. And we couldn't, they couldn't buy it. Mr. Gagnon didn't want to sell it. Right. So Father Bayette came to me at the convent and said, Sister, why wouldn't you go and ask him? So I said, how can I ask? He says, well, ask him where you have to buy that uh, plot. So I went. And at first he said, no, no, I don't want to give it to the church. Well, I said, yes, but don't give it to the church. Give it to the children of Champlain. And he said, well, I says, why don't you? The children have a place to play in summer. So finally, he didn't sell it. He gave it to me. And I said, can I do what I want with it? He said, well, yes. So I said, okay, Father Bayette. It's yours. <laughs> and that's how come that Mr. Van and the men working on the highway in July of 1961, I believe, uh, started to to uh, level, level the the ground in back of the on the right side of the school, and we had a lovely uh, playground as well as a field. But I was transferred just as they finished in <laughs> July 30th. They finished that. And I was transferred August 1st back to Colebrook. <laughs> and I never saw a, a game on that field. But I was happy that they had it. Right. You know, I loved Champlain. Thank you very much. Most of that work was done by the workmen who worked on the thruway. Right. In making Route 87, the Northway. Right. And donated their time and their equipment so we could have that. And all the people in Champlain should be thankful for them and for you for getting that last uh, piece of land. Uh, on the right hand side as you face the church. They came, the, the men would come from 7 to 9 every night of July and they worked so well. They would sing away and the cross would give them a little bit of beer before they <laughs> left. Beer? Where did you get beer, sister? Where did you get that? Out of your st your private stocks I or don't something? Know, but some of the men must have brought it in. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. That explains it. <laughs> Thank but you thanks, very much. And thanks all the people of Champlain. I love them. I love them all the time. Thank you very much. And blessings to all of their families. Okay. First, one of our sit one of our passengers in the car is Doris Picard. Uh, Doris, your maiden name was Doris Duto. Duto, and what you graduated from St. Mary's. Yes. Went there all, went there all, my life. all your life, and your uh, sister, at least one sister? I had two sisters. They both go there, too? Yes, they did. My sister was Marion Patnos, and she's passed away. Uh-huh. And my other sister is Teresa Rascal. Okay. And she graduated six years after I did, I guess. Uh -huh. We won't ask you when. They'll, they'll start figuring out your age. <laughs> they'll start figuring out your age, Doris. Long time ago, Bob. Doris has been here before, uh, and Florence has been here before, and this... A lady right here that we remember was Sister Andre. That's right. And when were you in Champlain, Sister? I was uh, 15 years in Champlain. Do you remember when you got there? Uh, in '64. Uh huh. Uh, so you were. Uh, I went. Uh, I I left Champlain '17. Uh huh. And uh, I liked it very much. I remember the people. I don't see them very often because every time they have a class reunion. Uh, it's always the time I go home, and it's a special time at, in my family. At this time, I have to go at this time. So, uh, I, I don't think, I, I mean, I remember some of them. If I would see them, probably I would uh, 
Mm-hmm. But, uh, you probably I, remember the bad ones. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was teaching French and music. Uh -huh. I started with music, and after that I, was, I, I became sick, and I have to leave that. And uh, I was teaching. I came back. Uh, I went away because I was sick, and I came back. And there I was. I had my uh, uh, my little boy choir in the Champlain. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday we would sing. I, I remember uh, this is. Uh, it, it was a very happy group, and I love to see mm -hmm. them. We hope you're feeling better now. Uh, uh, feeling I pretty well. I am growing older. You are growing. Older. Do you know anybody who isn't? <laughs> Do you know anybody who isn't grown older? Oh, sometimes I feel I grow old. <laughs> Does she remember no. any of the boys in her choir? I still have a lot of life. Do you remember any of the boys in your choir? Yes. Can you give me some names? Uh, my, I, I, only, I had only one group, really. The first year I was there, uh, I, was, I had a quite uh, uh, high school boys, and I remember we had a... Uh, we prepare something very extraordinary that was a, uh, a show and they had to sing. Like, uh, uh, I remember uh, Raymond Monet. Raymond Monet, uh, yes. Raymond Monet. And there's some others there, but uh, that was the year of Raymond Monet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are, uh, and after that I, I had to go because I was sick. Mm -hmm. And I came back after. Yes. Right. D will you make the reunion this year? Uh, I'm sorry. Family again? Too because that's the time I always go home and I wait. Okay. I live way up north. Where is that? Yeah. In that's Canada? In Saguenay. In Saguenay, yes. Uh -huh. Chicoutimi. Oh, Chic Chicoutimi. That's right. Oh, well, yes, I know. I've heard that. Yes. Yes. Do you want to say hello to all the people who will be watching this? Sure. <laughs> Say oh. hello, people. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who are watching this? <laughs> Champagne people, I'm very glad to have this occasion to to uh, uh, to say hello to you and to thank you for everything you did for uh, uh, for the, the the children and the sisters in Champagne. And I think you are a wonderful group. Uh, you work a lot and you have a lot of ideas. I'm always surprised what is coming out from you. <coughs> That's good. Thank you very much, Sister Andre. Uh huh. You're welcome. Now I hope they they're going to understand me. Oh, they'll because understand I you. Don't speak you want to speak in French? Much more. Listen, much speak to him in French a little bit. To. Speak in French. Say something to him in French. Ah, vous avez peut-être désir de saluer toutes les tous les gens de Champlain. Je me rappelle de vous autres. Et puis je prie pour vous autres. Et puis je vous souhaite une bonne bonne fête, une belle célébration. Okay. Now say that. Tell us that what you just said in English for those people who don't know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot what you said. No, I, I said that I, I, I'm glad to have this occasion to say hello to everybody in Champlain, especially those who I know and those who know me. And uh, I, I wish you a very, very nice celebration because you really deserve it. You, I know that you worked an awful lot to have this celebration as well as uh, nice as you could. Thank you very much, Sister uh -huh. Andrew. Okay. Now this is not the parade. This is not Bazaar Weekend. But you saw this fine lady on Bazaar Weekend. She was one of the uh, marshals, right? The grand marshals with the sisters uh, at our re reunion uh, for the sisters at on uh, Memorial Day weekend for our bazaar and it's a sister who sister your name full sister Leona Stacy sister Leona Stacy you're one of the ones who've been in our at our uh, school one of the last ones I believe right? right you were there how long well 22 years in all <laughs> but uh, I first arrived in 1949 and I had the choir and the glee club and uh, I remember very well the glee club because I um, have some boys that would go into the club room and out the other way so they didn't stay for any practice. <laughs> and one of them was uh, Boyer. Was it, uh, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Boyer. Boyer. He would do that, you think? Yes, he would do that very well. Probably much. just a story, a sister. Beautiful voice, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> but he wouldn't give it whatsoever. <laughs> and then I had the choir, uh, the grade choir. Uh -huh. And I taught music for the first year. 
but then I left and then I came back in 1970 and there I stayed for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. You taught what grade? Uh, last? I taught the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Right then, from the very beginning. And then we had an interview with you way back in 1989, right. I think it was, huh? Right, when I left. One of our very first ones. And you left because of family uh, That's right. uh, health reasons, My right? My mother was alone. Your mother, you went to take care of your mom and your dad. And uh, are you staying here now at the provincial yes, house? Yes, I am. And uh, it gives me an opportunity to go and visit my mother at the rest home. She has a uh, she has Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and is blind. Where is she uh, here in t Bradford? In Bradford, huh? in Bradford, but it's not too far. Mm -hmm. I can go back and forth. You drive, right? Yes, I have their car. I have my mother's car. Uh -huh. For okay. the time being, and it'll be now the rest of the year when you're not visiting your mother, are you on vacation or are you retired? I'm retired. You're retired? You don't have to do anything at all? Well, I help out around. You make yeah. your own bed? Well, I hope so. <laughs> you, you I didn't, hope so. You didn't expect that question, did you? <laughs> I hope I can do a little bit. You're going to be over there on the 9th and the 10th, I hope, oh, right? Bet. Of course. Oh, yes. You'll be seeing I your people. I want to see all of them. Okay. Please, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, she has been a worker in our bazaar for many, many, many years down in counting the money. That's right. And uh, right. working very hard uh, d down. And uh, of course, we missed her. We missed, and then this year we had Rita back. Uh, you know, Rita Keefe was back. Well, sister, I'm glad to see you're doing so well, and you're, you're, you have your no same smile. You don't always use that smile, but you got it a lot of times. There you are. There it is. You can't use it when you're teaching sometimes. You can't? No. Oh, my gosh. I had some little devils. You did? Yes. <laughs> we won't name those. No, no, no. Okay. We won't name them, but I think they'll know who they are. Thank you, Sister Leona <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> Thank you, and I wish everybody a very nice uh, celebration. And I would like to see, and I hope to see, a lot of the people that I knew. I'm sure you will. I get too much light, you won't see her. Uh, Florence Carter is with us and uh, led us over here and got us to the right place. And Florence, you uh, graduated from uh, St. Mary's. I did. And uh, several of your children, too? Yes, all of them. All of them? But, uh, no, one of them. One of them did. 69 was the last one. Uh, and then so the others, could, they all went to school there. Yes, they did. And Armin graduated from there, your husband, yeah. Armin Carter. All right, and your brothers and sisters, too, before you? Yes, they did. Well, name a few of those. There's uh, Lucille, uh -huh. and Arsene, and Roger, and Pat, and Betty. Okay, they all were there, and your father was, and your mom? Armin Favreau, Eva Favreau. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, knew Helen Babby very well. Helen Babby your... was my aunt, my mother's sister. Mother's sister. I did a lot with the nuns, and was okay. well liked by the nuns. All right, now, you, we have another sister here, and uh, she. we hope we can hear her, and her name is? I'm Sister Rose of the Eucharist. Okay, do you remember when you were at St. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I when forgot were, that. When were you at St. Mary's? About 1935, I think. 1935. 1935. And for how long? And I was there until 1946. 1946? Yeah, back when the, uh, the borders were there, huh? The who? You had the borders? The borders. You had borders. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And what did you do? I was a music teacher there, and some of the boarders were Italian. It was Teresa De mm -hmm. and there was a Garofano girl, and uh, then the others. Well, I can speak to you about the females more because uh. I had the choir, mm -hmm. and uh, then there was uh, in the choir I had uh, uh, Adrian Filio, Valeria Filio. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gustave Fidio. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that, I think, uh, Valeria is. Uh, I can't remember which one is. Uh, Valerian Fillion was Betty Fillion's father. Yes, right. Adrian was Pauline Fillion's yeah, father. And, and, and Charles. Gustave, right, yeah. yeah. And Gustave was um, John Fillion and Irene and uh -huh. Tony Fillion. That was their father. Wow. And they were all in the choir, and sister had them. Uh huh. Yeah. You see, I had in the choir. I had some females, but uh, it was Valerian, of course, mm -hmm. I was grandfather to some of those going to school. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, Eva Filio, when does she come in? I Eva Filio would have been um, Gustav Filio's daughter. She married uh, Favreau, right? Edward uh, Ed Favreau. Edward Favreau, yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Edward Favreau. Well, 
Well, see, I had his father uh, there, so mm -hmm. he was in the court. And uh, uh, that video, well, I think he has now, uh, it was Father Bruce. She, she knows yes. Father Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was in school. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, and besides that, too, the lady was in those fields. I can't remember too much of it anymore. Uh huh. It was Mrs. Hubbard. I don't know. Mrs. Hubbard. I don't know. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Do you want to just say, wish everybody a nice reunion and um, talk to the people of Champlain on the camera? Just. Yes, well, there's some other good Oh, yeah. oh there's some more. Dave, all the names you want. Yes, yeah. <laughs> name some names. There's one that was uh, taking music, and she, I forgot what her name was. She was towards uh, the uh, rapids there. In yeah, the rapids? That's too, that's too far back. I some Bayshard? Um, Would have been a Bayshard? Um, Bayshard, yes. Yeah. I forget where the first name was. Well, you're doing very well. You're yeah. talking 60 years ago, yeah. sister. Yeah, <laughs> quite a ways back. That's, yes, that's quite some time. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> I played the organ quite, some, quite a few times when the uh, organist wasn't there. Uh -huh. um, I directed the choir probably in four or five years. Uh -huh. And uh, that was when I was a music teacher, so I can't remember all the troubles I had because uh -huh. we had boarders and grandparents uh -huh. and back, you know. Uh -huh. Well, well, you're doing well. There was a, a family there that was Protestant, I don't know. They used to have a ski. Brainbergs. Brainbergs, yes. Uh, I taught the, uh, the little boy. Henrik? Henrik. And Olive? Uh, not Olive. There's no. Joan. Joan? No. She was a young girl. I can't be there. I don't know. Folks, anybody who's listening, we're talking 60 years ago, uh, this sister was there and probably hasn't mentioned their name much in the last 60 years, and an excellent memory, excellent memory. <laughs> Very good. Thank well, you. We, we had a nice choir. Uh-huh. And everybody enjoyed it. Uh-huh. I think once or twice a week they would come and rehearse them at the convent. And then we sang at church. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You've got a very good memory. Christmas, the Christmas series, you know, carols. Uh -huh. And something at Easter and Holy Week. And uh, I guess that's about it. Okay, well, thank you very you're much, very sister. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Uh, I enjoyed being in Champlain a lot. You did. Yes. Good. And at that time, we had Mother McTill. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's the theory. Yeah. Yes. You didn't have as good a quarters. Uh, Sister Claire too. Sister Claire was the assistant. Uh -huh. Sister Joseph was a was a French nun, and she was a, in the uh, sewing department. She was uh -huh. we had pure women. We had those clubs that you probably don't remember. But we were just the stash that was in the yes. But I was at the piano. In the, I mean, at, at the uh, telephone and the door bell. Uh -huh. So I didn't go to that job. <laughs> right. You didn't have to work on the house. Now, in case somebody tuned in since you told us your name, give us your name again. Sister Rose of the Eucharist. Okay. There's one of the female girls there that I taught music. Yes. Pauline? I think it was... Uh, Pauline? Florence. Florence? Florence or probably Pauline. Pauline played the piano a lot. I don't know. I, I know Pauline. Pauline. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, sister, again. <laughs> we, we've come out onto the front porch, all right, with screened, glassed in porch, by the way. It's nice and warm here, right? Sunny. And this sister's having a great time looking at some old yearbooks. Looking at some of her, your own pictures? Everybody's pictures. Everybody's. It's reminiscing on the okay. yearbook. You're going to give me your name first? Some lovely students. My name is Sister Agnes Plant. Mm -hmm. Used to be St. Jude. Oh, you better say that because that's oh, what I'm they remembered that. you as. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. very important. And when were you at St. Mary's? 1953, 54, huh? 55, 56, through 59. Uh-huh. And you taught what? I taught religion and business subjects. Were you easy? Not so. It depends who you're talking to. <laughs> were you tough? Yes. You were, huh? Yes, but kind. kind. Oh, you were kind. I heard that. Yes, I heard that. And did you... Uh, <laughs> did you... <laughs> do you remember some of those... Uh, Students, students of yours? Oh, I remember a lot of them. Can you can name off them? Huh? Can you just name them? Wait a minute, I'll look them uh, up. Okay, look them up right no, there. No, I can tell you without... Uh, I had the Fecto Girls, the... Well, Shirley Matot, Agatha Matot, um... 
this is hard Pauline to do, Pecto. folks. Yeah. It's very oh, hard to do. Yeah, just name yeah. a rat out of the place. Right. Yes, right. Nice boys. Yeah. Frank Gay, Leewood Babby. Who else? James LeClaire. Uh-huh. Oh, a whole Which of the business courses did you teach? Bookkeeping, shorthand, and typing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Do you, could you still take shorthand? Do I still yeah. take shorthand? No. No, I mean, you can you remember it? We when don't you need it. It takes a while. <laughs> you don't need it anymore. I remember a word or two. Uh-huh. Okay, and uh, you're now you retired now? No. Where are you now? Did you tell right me? Right here. You're, you're right here? And now do you <laughs> teach from here? No, I don't teach from here. I work from here. You work here? <laughs> okay. You're, see, I, I'm a I'm stranger. Yeah, that's right. Okay, uh, you're not teaching I'm business here. No, I'm not teaching no. business. I'm secretary. Okay, that follows us. Sister Rosina Bishop, who was a oh, yes, Mary's yes. and graduated. Yes, yes. not only that, was born in Champlain, right? A native of right. Champlain, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Well, and you were in Champlain from 53 to 59. 59. We're glad you were there. I and am too. I had nice students. Are there. you going to be at the reunion, you think? I hope so. Okay, we'll see you then. Yeah. All right. Thank you much. All right. On to the next one. Well, well I'm going to shut off of you here very slowly. Okay. Well, most people, when they see me, say, oh, I'm glad to see you. And uh, <laughs> uh, right now, if no one's glad because our battery is dying, we're going to take a short break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. The battery's been renewed, and this is a very familiar person around Champlain. Your, your name, sister? Sister Rosie Mill. Okay, Rosie Mill and Gay. Gay, you're born in Champlain. I was born in Champlain. And your mom and dad? Philip Gay. Mm -hmm. My mother was Rose Musso. Right. When did you join the order, sister? Do you uh, what uh, year? I entered in 1936. 36. Do you remember who was most instrumental in getting you to be a sister or encourage, encouraging you? Well, it happened this way. I was working, working as a maid for Dr. Gagne's wife. You had graduated already from school? No. no oh, okay. No, I never went. I went to Shacy School. Oh, I see. Yes, and I didn't graduate. Okay. Um, one day she asked me, Rose, what, what, what are you going to do with your life? And right off the cuff, I said, I'm going to be a sister. And that was like a challenge. Mm -hmm. I never had dreamt of being a sister. It was the furthest from my mind. And then it was that very week I went to see Mother McTill. Uh -huh. And uh, it was Ma uh, Mary Evangelist, Sister Mary Evangelist, who answered the doorbell and she said, who do you want to speak to? I said, I don't know, I, I don't mind, I, I just want to be a sister, that's all. <laughs> so Mother McTill came <laughs> and uh, Mother McTill really helped me out. Mm -hmm. And it's been a good life for you? It's been a very good life. Uh, you taught in Champlain some, uh, some of your l lifetime? Only two years. Two years. Uh -huh. Sixty to sixty-two. Mm -hmm. What did you teach mostly while you were in the art? Only history. Only history. Mm -hmm. You mean only one subject, but the yes. history is a lot more than only. Yes, in high uh, school. Uh huh. And uh, for how many years were you teaching? In my whole life. Yes. I don't know. In your whole life. A lot of them. A lot of them. Oh, you you figure I'm going to figure out how old you are, so you won't mention that. <laughs> oh, I got you. I just got it, sister. I just got it. Many years, right? Many years. Uh, one more thing here uh, about that. Um, now, here uh, at the uh, provincial house, the person, uh, are they call the mother here? No. What's the person in charge called? Sister Rosina. No, no, but I mean, what is it? Uh, what is, uh, oh. is there a title? Provincial. 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 Right. You, were you provincial at one time? I think you were, weren't you? Yes, I did. That means you were in charge. Sister Lucille wasn't the big cheese then, you were. Is that right? Well, a lot of people are. <laughs> a lot of people have. Come from Champlain. Yes. Now, you are elected to that by the sisters? Or how are you chosen? No, that's, um, to, I don't know. To the vote. We did vote. Yeah, everybody voted. They vote for it, yeah? They vote? That means they like you a little bit, or they didn't like you. Which is it? <laughs> oh. It's a tough job, isn't it? Yeah. It sure is, yes. Okay, so you've you've learned you've earned your your retirement now, and you're enjoying this beautiful home here. That's right. And uh, you get to Champlain now and then. Yes, it was a whole year in Champlain. Yeah, whole year. I enjoyed every. You, I met you. Did you? So many people you know over there. A lot of relatives. Yeah. 
we still around? Good card players. Who, oh, you missed a card player. Who did you play cards with? Well, we had a number of them. Yes. Uh, Laura Trombley. Oh yeah. Once. Yeah. I don't know what her, made it, her name is now. Uh, Laura Trombley. Yeah. Laura. Yeah. Uh, oh yes, the old uh, telephone operator. Or the, excuse me, I don't mean to say old telephone. The uh, telephone operator in the past. This is Harold Bocare. This is Harold Magella Kuhn and the Bocare. Yeah, yes. All there. Okay. And one lady that was especially good to us was um, Janine Fecto's mother. Yes. Um, I can't give you her first name. This is Adrian Fecto. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. She would bring us to church and back mm -hmm. every, every day. Mm -hmm. Well, I was talking to one sister earlier, and they said they just loved Champlain. Probably as nice of duty they've ever had you know, all the time they were in the, you know, in the yard. Or, and the people in Champlain love the sisters, particularly the sisters. Listen to this now, the charity of the, 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 the daughters of the charity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I said it, didn't I? I've improved. <laughs> if you keep talking like that, I'm going to shut this camera off. You know my father? Yes, I know your father, like yes. That. Now, how is Leo? Is that, uh, is he a nephew of yours? Leo? The young Leo. His wife won uh, $40,000 on Jeopardy. Oh, that, that is, yeah. He's related to you, huh? Yes. Okay, well, listen, thank you very much for talking to us, and we'll see you at the reunion. Okay. We're going to be going into lunch pretty soon, but we've got a few minutes to talk to this lady who's sitting out here just enjoying. It's not the same chair we just saw. they got a whole series of them. They're all so alike, see? See that? This, she's got the one with the round back. That one's flat a little bit. All right, so tell us. Your name, Sister? I'm, I'm Sister Rose Angeline. Okay, Sister Rose Angeline, tell us. I was nine years in Chamberlain from 1939 to 49. I started teaching third grade, and my first pupils that I can remember right now Rose Gouache, <laughs> Faith, Faith Ann Standish, jo uh, Joseph Wells, Elrica Wells. Um, these are the ones that come to mind. Okay. Right now. now, is that because they were good students or noisy students? They were my students. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're a diplomat. You are. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I love them very you much. You say you started in the third grade. Does that mean you did other grades too? No. When I started, no, my first year in Champlain, I taught third grade. Uh -huh. And at the end of the year, the following year, I went up with my students. In the you know, second year, I taught third grade again. And then the third year, I went up with my students. I had Marilyn Preble, oh, yes. Jerry Broad, and Jane Barbo, George Heinert, um, I don't, Orion Bichard. Uh, I just don't remember. Mm, of course, so we understand. And then I went up and I had these pupils in the third, fourth, and fifth grade. You follow them. And I always, uh, I told them they were my favorite class <laughs> pupils, my pupils because I went up with them three years. No. Are you sure that you were their favorite teacher? Uh, well, I don't know. You don't? Know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they must have been after three years. <laughs> well, anyway, they, they used to come to see me after school and mm -hmm. they would talk. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You can't do that anymore. Uh, the teachers in the public schools now, as soon as the bell rings, they all run home. And if you want to see a teacher or a parent, you have to arrange during their free period during the middle of the day. You have to take a vacation if you had a job to go see them during the middle of the day. Oh. This is the way it works in public schools today. They aren't there after school anymore. You know, they have the uh, meetings at night once a, a quarter or something like that. So what did you do when you left Champlain? I was transferred to Coldbrook, one horse down. Well, Colebrook won't see that, so it's okay to talk like this. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I cried when I left Champlain. You did, huh? Yes, because I was there nine years, and uh -huh. I loved my work there. And so the following October, which I, I was in Colebrook, <coughs> the boys came, the, I don't know, the car came from Champlain, and we had benediction of us at Sacrament in our chapel at 4 o'clock, and Jimmy Bravo and George and Jerry Bar were the altar boys that were serving benediction mm -hmm. and they stayed for about two hours with us and we oh, all those who had been to Champlain before mm -hmm. we enjoyed them very much. You like to see your students you have come visit you don't you? Mm -hmm. Anybody out here that wants to come over here would be you'd be very pleased to see them obviously. I was always happy to see my students Okay. and I was very happy in Champlain. I love the people. The people are very kind, <coughs> very nice and uh, the students 
they kept a, I don't know, the, st the student seems to be attached to all the sisters mm -hmm. who were in Champlain. Now, when you left, you didn't have much choice on that. You were told you were going to Colebrook. Is that what happened then? That don't happen anymore today, right? No. You more or less have a choice today? Yes. So things have changed. We used to receive a little letter uh -huh. in the month of August telling us the Sacred Heart was calling us okay. here there. Did it have a black edge around the letter when you got the envelope? No? No, they didn't have that. You didn't have that. <laughs> Where were you from, sister? Newport. Newport? So you were all, you're not too far from home right here either. Always have been. All right. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, and we hope we'll see you at the reunion. I gave my name. I okay. <laughs> We were leaving. You were saying you knew you taught Bernadette. Who? Bernadette who? Bernadette Gay. My sister-in-law. Right. My wife's sister, yes. But there's another reason why people in Champlain know you or should know you. Because I'm Sister Amy's sister. Sister Amy's sister. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but no one ever takes Sister Amy's place in Champlain, I guess. She was there how long? 50 years? She was there 40 years. 40 years. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um... Uh, so, you want to tell me, she was older than you? Do you want to tell me that right now? Oh, yeah. She's older than you, of course. Yes, she It's is. always nice to say when they're older. We miss Sister Amy. And uh, who was one of her good friends with uh, aggravation in Champlain? <laughs> Oral Parsons. Oral Parsons, yes. <laughs> oh, my. He'd say, devil, devil, devil. <laughs> Help me to win. And she'd say, Oral, Oral. <laughs> And Sister Amy said, Sacred Heart of Jesus, Sacred Heart of Jesus. <laughs> help me to win, help me to win. You know, when we talk about Oral, Oral did an awful lot for the sisters in our school over the years. Uh, uh, we could, probably couldn't have operated without Oral Parsons. Too true. Too he true. did a lot himself, and he sent his employees up to help us out at, at St. Mary's. He was always there when there was somebody needed. Yeah, and of course, Marilyn also, Marilyn. his wife. Uh, and, uh, uh, I beg your pardon? I said she let him go. Yes, yeah, she let him go, right. Uh, all husbands never go anywhere until the wife lets him go. You know that, <laughs> right? Oh, he has a smile. <laughs> Sister, thank you again. Thank you. This will just be a sh quick shot in the dining room. Uh, it's noon here in Littleton, New Hampshire. And this is where the food is served. There they go. It's like you pick up your own, I guess. You take what you want, but you eat what you take. I think that's one of the rules. It's the it's Tuesday, July 16th. Please stay with us. We'll be back. and we had uh, mashed potatoes, peas and carrots, jello, six choices of drinks. We're having a great time at the uh, Provincial House in Littleton, New Hampshire, uh, the home of many of our former teachers and very good friends from our order at St. Mary's who have been in Champlain serving the people. Very few there now, but over the years there's been as many as 25 and 30 at one time. Back in the 50s, worked very hard, taught many of the people who are watching. Several priests came out of their efforts. Father White, Father Bruce Favreau. Uh, I think Father Schnab went to St. Mary for a while. Not sure of him. If you're enjoying this, we're reminiscing. You're asking about so many people that we know in Champlain, and many of them have passed away, and they didn't know it. Please stay tuned. There's a picture of Littleton showing the overall uh, city, and right there in the middle is the home 
before the additions were made. You can see all the land, they're completely sheltered all by all sides. It's a beautiful spot, and they made the additions, you heard, and one of them at least in 75. And uh, that's Littleton. We're gonna go out and speak to someone else now. In the chapel at the Littleton, the altar up front, uh, you can see the little type ceiling, lots of lights in here. Uh, nearly individual chairs and benches, you can see. And one of the things that we were pointing out, and this is the Stations of the Cross. You know, the stations you have around the church are here. Each one is here in the back. Right on the wall. Some of the people? Okay, we'll talk to this sister right here. Bean Seven, she's got a magazine in her hand right there. Like, we're not even going to ask which one. <laughs> Hi. It's a uniform magazine because I'm a nurse. Because you're a nurse? Yes, I'm okay. Sister Lucy de la Briere. Okay, and you were in Champlain? Yes, I was. Tell us when. I was there for five years when, and uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, 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 we made, a, we made a big impression on you. <laughs> no, in my years I escaped me. I believe it was uh, 1978. Through, through 83 or through so? Through 83. Okay. Yes, I think that's perfect. All right, and then in, you were teaching there? I was teaching second grade. Second grade? Married, yes. Now, what's this nurse business? You're now a nurse? I left the teaching uh -huh. career. I left Champlain with the intention of going into nursing because our community needed nurses to help care for our elderly sisters uh -huh. and so I offered I was interested very interested in nursing and I offered to go to nursing school to take on the position here at Mount Sacred Heart in Littleton to, as administrator of our health care. Okay now is the you're telling me that Mount Sacred Heart that's in the same same complex this is Mount Sacred Heart. This is, okay, it is Mount Sacred Heart. It's called Mount Sacred Heart. Okay, on the mount here, yes. So, how many years of nursing did you have? I have had nine years of, I'm actually finish, finishing my tenth year since uh -huh. I graduated from nursing school. Uh -huh. You enjoying it? I have enjoyed nursing very much. Yeah. I enjoy teaching very much, too. Mm -hmm. And I miss the children. My nursing... My, uh, the nursing I love, and I love taking care of people, and I love working with the elderly, but I miss the children aspect. I'm sure you enjoy taking care of your, your own here, too. I you know? have, but actually I'm finishing this work here at Mount Sacred Heart as administrator, and I am joining Sister Cecile Fortin and Sister Mary Monica in the new project that we are looking to begin, a new mission, a new house somewhere in the southern part of the country. And yeah. we're, that's all in formation right now. So I'm actually, this month, the month of July, I'm finishing my terms, my eighth year here at Mount Sick. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you become a sister? When did you take I your final? My final vows in 1984. Mm -hmm. So your when first vows? I was vows? in Champlain, I was in, I was, uh, in temporary vows. Okay, temporary vows. Actually, when I began in Champlain, I was still a sec I was a second year novice. Uh -huh. When I began my, uh, I, I made my first profession while I was in Champlain, but I did not make it in Champlain. But many of my friends from Champlain came to my first profession. Mm -hmm. Where were you from? Your home? My hometown is, is uh, near, it's near Newport, Vermont. Mm -hmm. Little tiny community is what you're going to tell me? No? Westfield, yes. Westfield, okay. Westfield. How, big, how big is Westfield? Like Perry's Mills? Perhaps. Cooperville? <laughs> Not very big. Not very big. A few blankets gone. <laughs> Were you from a farm? I grew up on a farm, yes. And I went to school at Sacred Heart. Most of my years um, uh -huh. in elementary school and high school at Sacred Heart mm -hmm. in Newport. Do you find that farm training was good for you? Always. Always, I huh? I love the country. I love nature. I love okay. it. So you were, you're going to leave now. We want to get you in here before you leave. So where are you heading now? You out to do some more uh, learning? No. No. I you don't have to continue. tell me exactly where you're I going. I will continue my nursing. I will hope to get a job in nursing. I have no idea what kind of job uh -huh. because I'm not sure what's available. And we're not sure which state we're going to okay. yet. So 
the, pro the project that we're talking about forming is still very much in the process, just the beginning and the formation okay. process. Okay, it's a project of the Daughters of the Charity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, still? Yes, it is, of this province. Okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, and good luck in the South. We hate to see you leave, but... Yeah. I enjoyed my time in Champlain. My five years there were very special and very precious, and I made some very good friends that I mm -hmm. have kept since I've been out of Champlain. And I, I enjoyed my time here at Mount Sacred Heart, and it's mm -hmm. time for me to move on. Was Champlain your first uh, station? First duty? Was, huh? You never forget that one, I guess, huh? No, no. No. I don't think you can ever forget Champlain. <laughs> I've always heard good things of Champlain, and everyone has good memories of Champlain. Listen, the people out there who are watching this are very, very pleased to hear that, and they're very pleased with the sisters, too. We've had, we've had wonderful friends out in Champlain. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I had to leave the chapel. Someone said, do you know uh, much about the chapel? I said, no. So someone tell me here. It's okay in the background? Yes. Okay. Tell me. This chapel was designed by Sister Mary O'Deal. And she wanted everything to be in the same style. So you see the tabernacle is like a triangle, and mm -hmm. in the middle of the sanctuary is a triangle. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want a, cruci a crucified cross. She wanted the resurrected Christ. So okay. So she put the, the sacred heart fits very well there. Uh -huh. And the statue comes from France. It's one of the first gifts that the mothers from France sent us when this building was open. Mm -hmm. it's a, it comes from France. And Sister Mary Dill was one of our high school teachers. Oh. And she had left her heart in Champlain. How long was she there? Do you know any idea? In Champlain? Yes. Oh my no God. I graduated in 46 and she was there then. In 46? Okay. Yeah. And what, what year did she leave? I have no idea. No idea. No. So we, we've lost Sister but Mary Odile yes. now? She's passed away. Uh, she married Adil. It must have been there 15 years. If not yeah, more. but she's passed away, what, two or three oh, years? She's old. She's passed away in 1989. 89. 89. Yes. Now, as far as you like coming over here, you come over uh, occasionally? once or twice a year. At least once or twice, and you come over with somebody else? Oh, yes. Right? Either with my sister-in-law, Rose mm -hmm. Favreau, or uh, Grace Track. Anybody mm -hmm. wants to take a ride to Little uh -huh. we come And over. they love to see you, and you love to see. Oh, they They're part of the family. Part, part of the family. Huh? Yes, they love to see the people <laughs> in Champlain. And if anybody out there want to take a ride, it's about uh, maybe, uh, let me think here, uh, maybe 120 miles maybe from Champlain, huh? Yeah, about well, two, two and a half, half, half to three hours. Two and a half to three hours. Two and a half to three hours and take a nice leisurely ride, see Vermont and uh, let them know maybe ahead of time you're coming and they'll be ready to see you and they, they won't be out, uh, they won't be out doing another job. It won't be in the, you have a garden, sister, here? Yes, we have a big garden, yeah. but Sister Monique Kutu is in charge of it, but she is in Africa right now. Uh -huh. Do you do you weed the garden yourself? Sisters help. Do you do it too? No, yes. I don't. You don't want to do that? Because... Uh, you don't have to tell me why. Because I get dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, Bob. That's, that's enough of that. That's the young ones do. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Just off the living room, is the grand library that belonged to the previous owner and it, uh, they left this beautiful room of course it's part of the building you can't take it with you a lot of these books came from the various library the former library in Champlain at the uh, St. Mary's and just look at this uh, uh, how high this is look at it's probably 14 feet in here uh, Cathedral ceiling, uh, not a cathedral, flat ceiling, but look uh, throughout here, beautiful glassed in doors there. Uh, just a great, great, I, as you people have watched before, know I love libraries. I love books, and uh, they've got it here in, uh, in Littleton. Uh, you can see it's on the outside wall, have the big windows. And books go all the way up and they have a ladder to get to the books that they don't get to very often. They can find them. And then there's a little settee in here, a little couch here and some chairs and they can sit around. Look at that gorgeous mirror. Uh, the library. Beautiful wood throughout. 
Uh, it's worth the trip just to see the library. So it used to be in Champlain. Tell us your name. Olivette. Sister Olivette. Okay. Now, you were in Champlain how long, Sister? But you said about... About four years. Four years. And what did you do in Champlain? Um, visit the sick and the shut in with my bicycle. With your bicycle, huh? And you visited a lot of people. And we're going to talk about some of those people in a few minutes. But tell us about the library now. The library... Uh, is as it was when we got it only we've been adding some books coming from the houses that we have closed okay and uh, m maybe some from Champlain when the, we had the high school in Champlain mm -hmm. then we have the the altar of Mrs. Moran okay right there yes And the crucifix. Crucifix right up above. That's uh, in in ivory. Is that what you say? In honor, in honor of. Ivory, no, made with ivory. Oh, ivory. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it was theirs. We didn't. Uh, uh huh. So they left their books right here, and you've been adding to them. Yes. That's right. Okay. But we fixed them up to. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, this was there too. Okay, that was here. Okay. And what you see through the window is Littleton. You can see Littleton here. We were there's a tree in our way, but you we don't see much. But right down in this direction is the community of Littleton, and we can't see it. We'll try to get a shot before we leave from outside. The leaves are out. We may not see as much as we'd like. Okay. When we got the place, we didn't have any chapel, so we used here as a chapel for many years. Uh -huh. Then, when Sister Mary O'Dell made the extension over there, that's where we had the chapel, so this came back to the library. Mm -hmm. You remember what years you were in Champlain? Um, 1986 to 1990. Okay, and you rode around on your bicycle to see the sick? Yes. Around the community, huh? Yes. Did you used to teach, sister, years ago? I never taught. How long have you been a sister? 44 years. Is that right? <laughs> because uh, I've entered the community quite late. Uh -huh. And uh, some, some of the people from Champlain who saw in the newspaper the um, interview I had with uh, about talking about Africa uh -huh. and um, I still have uh, that copy and I remember so well many of the people I saw one, Laura Goyette, every time I went, she had a little bowl of soup for me <laughs> because she knew I didn't drink milk. <laughs> and uh, Roy and Dorothy Smith, I went very often there and uh, the, uh, it was just like a, a friend. I was not only mm -hmm. visiting there for communion. Uh -huh. and, uh, do you still do that around Littleton? No, huh? you can't get out like that? Well, I did for a while, but now I have to walk because two years ago I was riding a boy's bicycle and I fell. I broke my shoulder in three places and my pelvis. And uh, But now I'm so well that I can run around, <laughs> but I cannot ride my bicycle on account of yes. my left arm. Right. Okay, well, uh, we got to, you had a list of names that you wanted to uh, ask us about, and my wife will be here very shortly. She's got Okay, it. we'll take a short break and be right back. <laughs> Thank you very much.
the library table, which is a nice place to be. And this is not the librarian I want to let you know, but it is a sister who was in Champlain. For, your name, sister? Uh, Cecile Fortin. Okay. But uh, way back from 52 to 58, I was in Champlain, and my name was Sister St. Reginald. All right. Now I was teaching the eighth grade. Do you feel different having a different name now than you did then? No. no. Is your real name, your original name, is Cecile Forte? Yes. Uh, Fortes came from Hemingford, a lot of them. Were you from... Uh, uh, no, we're not from that branch. Not that branch, huh? No. So you didn't have a bakery or anything like that when you were home? No. <laughs> uh, so you taught eighth grade for all the time you were in Champlain? Uh, I did teach uh, sixth grade and fifth grade for one year. Uh-huh. And... Uh, we had the new convent when you were there? Up on oh, oh, no. Oh, no. That was in the old convent, the tower. Oh, you were in the tower, huh? Yes, yes. Didn't have the quarters you have now, huh? No, and we had the uh, borders. Oh, the what year did you say? Oh, in the 50s, of course, excuse me. to 58. Oh, that's a long time ago. Yes. That's 30. But, you know, I remember the, uh, the children of Champlain. I always said that they had a lot of resilience. They, what, right? they had backbones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could really discipline them and they were right back again. Right yeah. back again. <laughs> did you enjoy discipline? I, you did? I, I think I was quite severe. You were good at uh, it? And severe. It's needed too, isn't it? But I think it was better for the children uh -huh. because uh, they knew what I wanted. Yeah. But you loved them. I you loved did it for their benefit. I, <laughs> that's what, that's I what we tell them. That's for sure. <laughs> How many, how many did you have in your classes back then? Oh, must have been between 20 and 30. Yeah, today, I think they say, you know, uh, public schools, 22 or 23, that's the most you can have. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of tough. Uh, so you d when you left the, the classroom at 3.30, 4, 4.30, whatever, you didn't have the nice places to return that the sisters in later years had. We did not have the nice places, but we had a lot of family spirit. Uh -huh. We had a lot of fun. I can say that I really laughed a lot in you Champlain. Did? Well, yes. Had you been in very long when you came to Champlain? Uh, no, not very. Okay, it now two years, three years. Two years, and so this is one of your first ones, uh, it was. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember how many sisters were there when you were there? We must have been 22 or 23. Yeah, a lot of them, huh? And uh, now maybe you could explain to me there's a difference between a principal and a superior. Yeah. They mentioned before, you know, that uh, I mentioned Sister Anne Marie, and they said she was the mother superior. What did that mean, or superior rather? What does that mean? The superior deals with the uh, responsibility of the community, the religious community. In Champlain. In Champlain. That she's in charge of the community. Right. But not of the school. Not of the school. And the principal of the school is in charge of the education in the right. school. And they sometimes are the same person and sometimes not? Uh, usually it was not, okay. but it did happen at times. Yeah. That it was. Were you ever a principal anywhere you went? No. Nope. Did I you ever want to be? Uh, I shouldn't say that. I was for <laughs> two years. Well, that's a long time. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't care to. Be. I preferred teaching. Okay. Are you retired now? Uh, or do you still substitute or what? Well, I spent 12 years in France. and You did? I just came back, and I'm looking forward to something new. Okay. So you were teaching there in France? No. I was in the government of the congregation. Oh, were you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you got a, you know your French pretty well then? Oh, yes. You were from Canada? No. No? I'm an American citizen. Where were you from? By birth. Where? Were you, were you from? Derby, Vermont. And you knew French that well? Oh, yes, I knew French. Oh, yeah, French, French, oh, Forte, of course, what, what am I thinking of? I went up to Clarenceville, and I, I met the Millers, and the Adams, and the, and the Sells, and I didn't meet one Frenchman up in Clarenceville. It was one of the, uh, uh, the loyalist towns, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, listen, thank you very much for talking to us. Are you going to make the reunion? I hope you so. You hope so, and people yes. will be looking forward right. to give us your name again as a sister, your sister's name? Sister St. Reginald. There, yeah, Sister St. Reginald. And she smiles a lot more now than she did when she was then the teacher of the eighth grade. Yeah. She was a disciplinarian. <laughs> more or less. <laughs> we'll take a short break and come right back. You're watching Hometown Cable, and we are in Littleton, New Hampshire, at the Provincial House of the Order 
of the, let's call it, the Daughters of the Charity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, who have been in Champlain now for 90 years. Okay. We're still in the library. My wife, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. And sister, tell us your name again. Orivet. Orivet. And, and we're going to talk about a list that sister has right here that she had and wants to know about people she used to call on in Champlain. And Teresa will tell us some of those names, sister. Go down and talk about some, Teresa. Well, when you were in Champlain, you made the point of uh, visiting the sick. Yes. That's what you enjoyed doing, riding your bicycle and going up and down the street visiting the sick. Yes. And the, the shut-in. And the shut-ins. Yes. So I went to, some were not sick, but then... Um, they weren't able to be get yes. out and whatnot. I even <coughs> took it to hospice meetings with me. Yes, and I enjoyed it too. But I couldn't do much because um, I had no car and uh, I had, um, I visited one gentleman that uh, passed away and I used to call him my old man. Your old man, who was this? What was his name here on the list? Is he on here? I don't think so. Um, these are from the senior housing. Did he live in senior housing? No. The, he had a, a house. He, he still lived in, little, in uh, Champlain with his wife. And uh, they write to me once in a while. And uh, I, I couldn't go to his place because it was up on a hill. And uh, when it was raining or something, father used to take me there, or and sister, uh, who was driving there, sister Mary Ann, sister Mary Ann, yeah, and uh, he was very sick. I used to go uh, and talk to him and stay with him because his father, his son, was taking care of him. When he had to leave, he asked me to, and uh, he died, and I went to the uh, wait with Sister Marianne, and uh, Sister Marianne looked at me and had a little smile. I thought it was not the place to smile. When I came out, I said, why did you smile? He, she said, you always see my old man, <laughs> and he's younger than you are. <laughs> <laughs> he was only 68. <coughs> now, you used to ride a bike. In fact, you were, you kind of had uh, your heart set on a, a, a mini bike. Yes, but the, I never got it. No, we never found one <laughs> for you. <laughs> we were afraid something might happen to you. you. We used to go around the corners. Boy, you knew how to handle them. But you used to drive them, though, when you were in Africa, right? Uh, no, in Africa, I, I ride a horse. A oh, horse. Oh, I thought you had a motorcycle. No, when I, I was in the Army. <laughs> That's when you had the motorcycle. Yes, because I was a recruiting officer. And... Um, where was this, in the States or in Canada? In Canada, but I belonged to the Royal 22nd in Montreal. And you were in the Army for how long? Well, not very long. You wanted to stay, didn't you? Yes, but uh, I only weigh 82 pounds. <laughs> so you weren't very good up against the enemy, I guess. <coughs> but uh, in, in, I went to work in a war factory instead. And while I was there, there was two explosions there of the one of the building. You were only 82 pounds, and you were dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a short break here. I'm having some trouble coughing. Stand by. And we were talking. We found out the man that she was talking about, uh, who was only 68. It was, his name was Mr. Scriver. And we're having trouble with a first name. Okay, there's some other people that you had asked about in Champlain that you used to call on. 
Now, did you used to ride your bicycle down to see Mrs. Bayshore? Oh, of course I did. Mrs. Because it was hard to go up, but very easy to come down. That's right. It was downhill to go, but it was yeah. hard coming home. That was Mrs. Martha Bayshore. Yes. You spent a lot of nice hours with her. Yes. And Rainey's sure wife on the Rapids Road, right? Rainey's mother. On Rainey, the I'm sorry, wife, uh, mother, of course. And uh, I'm sure that she enjoyed those hours that you spent with him. Now, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Babby had her knee surgery, but she's feeling much better. Yeah. She she's getting around. I believe that I heard she had her knee surgery. Oh yeah. Mm hmm First names? Uh Betty Babby. Okay. And um, I don't know if you have Mrs. Hilda Filio. I did you know that uh, she has passed on? That's Dickie's yeah. mother? Yes. She's passed on. Dickie's just had recent surgery. He's been quite ill. Oh yeah. But he's coming along. Mrs. Adrian Filia also. Yeah. She was quite ill when you were in Champlain. Yes, yes, she was. I used to um, visit her, and um, she didn't care to let me go. But uh, when I left, she gave me a little butterfly. Uh, I still have you it. You still have the butterfly. <laughs> and then there's uh, Mrs. Gamash, Mrs. Henrietta Gamash. Yes. Um, I went to visit them more often because um, I felt the Mrs. Gamash needed the company. The, needed the company, yes. Yeah. I believe he's in the nursing home now. Yeah. And then Mr. and Mrs. G Norman Gamash, she just yeah. passed on here, I believe, yeah. not very long ago. Oh, yeah. And then Mr. and Mrs. Roy Smith, well, I see them quite often. And I used to go there and they were like friends with me because um, you know we just didn't talk about sickness or no, anything. No, 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 no. They enjoy yeah. having a good conversation. And uh, they wrote to me, uh, I think it's last Christmas or the Christmas before, I've got the letter up there that uh, they were uh, Well, next time I see them I'll tell them that you yeah. sent your love and oh, yeah. Mrs. Ruth Trombley, I believe she was what, a hundred when she passed on? In, in 99 or a hundred, 99 yes. or a hundred. That's she, Arvel and Annabelle. She and lived a little further yes, on. Yes, down yeah. on the road on Route 9 past That's Jerry right. Boyers, yeah. Yeah. yeah? And then Mrs. Margaret Castine, remember she used to be yes. a senior citizen? Yes. She had one leg oh. amputation. She had diabetes, yes, yeah. she was a diabetic. But just one, when mm -hmm. I left it, it just happened. Yeah, well, yeah. she, um, yeah, and then there's, uh, did you know Rose K, Mrs. Ernestine K? Up by the Sharon Nine Works? You have her name down yes. here. And then Michael Hayes, you know. Yeah. He was really sick. You used to visit him a lot. When yes. he was there, yes, she works for uh, Celine Racine now. A uh, Celine uh, Paquette. Oh yeah. Paquette's insurance. Paquette's insurance, and then Mr. Tacy up in more on Moore Street. Yes, yes. you yes, used to go yes, there to yes. see Bill and yes. Jean. Yes. He used to fix all the TVs in town. We miss him a lot. Yeah. And, and then of course Jeannie. Didn't he have a big dog somewhere? I'm not sure. Yes, I think Bill did have a dog <laughs> by, down there. Yeah. And then of course Jeannie. Yeah. She was a good friend of both of ours. Yeah. Jean Willett, we're Jeannie, talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Clifford Willett. And um, Mrs. Broadneck. Remember Celine Broadneck yeah. in Senior Housing? Yeah. She asked about you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That and was then, nice. I used to go there. They wanted me to play card, but I don't. I don't play card. You didn't play pinochle, and they never I, taught you how to do it. <laughs> they they did, but I didn't play that. Uh, we just played a um, little uh, game where. Uh, it wasn't did. cards. No. <laughs> Jean Jean Filia is yes. doing all right. She's um, she's had some problems. And Della Kay, I see her at church every Sunday. Oh yeah. And of course, you know Ruth Glow passed on. Yeah. She and Mother and Margaret and Della. And Mrs. Darby, I believe, is in a nursing home. Yeah. And Mr. Bulrus passed on. Mr. Mr. Bulrus. Oh yeah. Uh, Henry. Henry yeah. Bulrus. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 
and Jane Conrad. I'll, she's fine. She works every every month at the food co-op with us. Oh, I know. Yeah, nice. we got her involved in the JCO. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Cook, well, she's still there, and she yeah. feels fine. And Mrs. Fisk, I'll have to, I see Betty. Betty comes and works, too, yeah. once in a while. And Magella Bocare. I haven't seen Magella in a while. Rose passed on here this spring or last fall. She had surgery and then she got very, very Rose sick. Rose who? So La Fountain. You see the way I farm there where they live. Oh, I see. You yeah. had their apartment numbers <coughs> there. <laughs> and you see, this was downstairs and, and that was, was upstairs. upstairs. <laughs> okay. You see, folks, that uh, there are people who enjoy going out and see people who can't get out. Sister was one of those people. So, so important in the community to have someone like her. And of course, my wife's pretty good at that herself, going out and seeing the people who need help. Teresa, and I appreciate Teresa talking in my place over there. She did a good job. She's got the right questions, too. Uh, and uh, we appreciate very much your talking with us, sister. Well, I'm very sorry. I was very sorry to leave Champlain, but um, I couldn't ride my bicycle <laughs> anymore. Well, I was too sick at that time. I had a little heart attack when I came back here mm -hmm. in 1900. Well, someday when you get back to Champlain and we have some time, I would like to have you tell your life story on TV. Remember the night you were talking to Bob's cousin from Syracuse in that hotel room till like 2 o'clock in the morning? And you were telling us all your stories about Africa and what you've done in your... They were unbelievable. Oops. They were so amazed that this little lady did all that she's done in her life. We'll do that. We'll, the next time you're able and you got some time, sister, we'll do that. Well, that would be nice uh, because uh, it, it was my life and I still enjoy uh, looking at it because actually I'm practically doing nothing. <laughs> right now. Now, what did you say you're, you were how old? Do you want to tell us your age? I'd be 87 in three weeks. <laughs> what did you do last year that kept you off your bicycle? I, I fell. She and told us about that earlier. Oh, she yeah. did earlier? Yeah, yep, she fell. And um, she put her bicycle up in the garage. There's no <laughs> more bicycle for her. No, there was one of the nurses that wanted <laughs> it, and I gave it to her to make sure I wouldn't use it. Sister, she was skiing until two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Sister, no, thank you very, very much. We'll run along. we got three or four more people to talk to here, and we're going up to Newport. Well, to I thank you very much for coming. Because I'll see you in you in Champlain. Champlain. In Champlain in three weeks. Is it three weeks? Three weeks. Yep. August the ninth is Okay. Then. You see, and I'm August third. Your birthday? Yeah. Oh, we'll have to remember that. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Mm-hmm. See, oh, and she said it's all it's it's not picked read. up. Well it's the way it is. Uh huh. <laughs> and this is what room you tell me? Oh, well, what does that mean? That's not... Okay. Uh-huh. Look at that beautiful chest of drawers. Look at that beautiful chest of drawers over there. And this is... That was given to me uh, lately by a lady who just died. Isn't that beautiful? And I know what to do with the statues, so they wow. brought it here. Oh, I see the statues, yes. And the sisters, sisters picked them up. Uh-huh. Now we just have that more. That's what I Okay. And of course, we have the ever-present rockers. See, you can rock rockers. here. Look at the rockers. Look, look, look. They're not rocking babies here. They're rocking themselves. Look, all have a rocker. They, do you bring your knitting with you when you come? No, you don't bring your knitting. You don't knit. Oh yes, we you, you do. Okay. We sew. Uh huh. We talk. Down the hall, which some was here, some was added, and then just to my the back of me here is where the last edition started, right here, and we're going to the archives to see the uh, what they've saved over the years from the various places that the order has worked, uh, trophies, uh, pictures, uh, things of importance, things that are dear to their hearts and dear to the hearts of many others. 
an archive room look like in process? Of course, we're not talking just St. Mary's in Champlain. They've got archives from all of the different areas that they've worked. Uh, you know how many different places there? Wait, look, wait a minute, let's see this. Look at this. Wait a minute, just a second, do that again. Uh, these are, look like they're closed. It looks like a solid wall, and do that sister again now. Uh, and you see they move on a track. And so you can go in between. Isn't that great? And these boxes are all special boxes uh, because of uh, paper will disintegrate exactly. So you have special boxes. We also have a humidifier. Right here? Yes. Yep, that keeps the temperature and the moisture at a certain level so it doesn't uh, uh, injure the papers. Very, very important with your family paper, anybody who's watching, pictures, stories from the papers, uh, diaries, and so forth. Don't let them get out of your hands. They're very important to your family and to your offspring. In years to come, they're gonna, they'll hear, they will have hear, they will hear you've had a diary. They will look for it and look for it and keep it where it can be seen. Just have a, I'm working with a hundred boxes. A hundred boxes, See, no. I've started this a few years ago. Okay, now what would you store in these boxes? What type of things? I have the, uh, all the important documents from the uh, start of the foundation. Uh -huh. 1823 on. 1823 was the start of the order? All the important celebrations. Uh huh. And uh, next year I look forward to be putting in the 90th uh -huh. of Champlain. Right, yes. Let me take a short break because my battery is flashing. We've you exhausted another battery. Let me go get another. You have an index someplace, right? Yes. To uh, these are pictures from St. Mary's in Champlain. Uh, then you have the index in the front of what it is in each yes. box, right? Yes. Yeah, those boxes, very special boxes for very, very special papers. And you are in charge down here, sister? Or you're the archivist? Is that the right word? That's right. Archivist. And Sister Andre helps me with the big sister. library upstairs. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you work down here every day? Yes. Uh, number of hours every day, huh? Oh, I can put it in up to eight, nine hours. Is that right? Easily. You, your eyes are all right to do that? Fine. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this you can do sitting down. Well, the sorting, the sorting is long. Yes. Uh, the um, reading material is uh, much easier. Mm -hmm. Do you have an index like in a computer that would say, uh, tell you exactly what box to go? If, like names, for instance, that might be only appear here twice. Could you find a name by an, a computer index or anything? You can do that, huh? Okay. Uh, they're all commenting down here about uh, a display, which I understand in the background would show the uh, the habits of three different parts of the order, I guess. Yeah, well, there was another way that was just a little sleeve of it. Oh, you used yeah. to fool us. Yeah. They used to make us think it was the heated underwear, long underwear. No, 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 no. They did. They had some but like that. Now, explain that first one on the left, wait to me. On the way over on the side. This one here? Yeah, the one way on the left with the... What do you call the big white... They were, qu they were called quaffs. That's the way that our, these are our mother foundress and okay clients. yes that's that's the way they were dressed what? and so she just continued see okay and then um two years not two years but many years after did you have those in champlain like that mm -hmm. yes you did huh that's These how i went to school that's how you <laughs> saw yeah and, and then, then you had these two after oh yes and and th that's and another the, type the yes and then this went. is the last type okay now when i went to school they, when I was in Plasper, they didn't show their hair like that. Do I see hair in that one on the left? <laughs> oh, yeah. Way over? Yeah. I didn't know s sisters had hair. Well, that's a doll. It's oh. coming way down here. Oh, okay. Well, our hair did show. It our did, huh? Did. Not very much. much. Oh, yes, yes, it did. Otherwise, not much. No, not, too not, much. not much, but, but it did show. A bit. And the, le the second one, we well, it color So you didn't have to spend much time in the morning fixing that little bit of hair in the front. Well, you'd be, you'd be surprised. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be fixed times a little bit. 
came out and was it nice so we just combed it. Okay. You bring your habit a little closer to the front. Oh, I think this is well, so pretty. pretty. Oh, they're adorable. Just to them. think that the this three generations have right. okay. seen those, you know, and passed through my family. So now the white has been disappearing to where there's very little white showing on the... Yeah, she's cute, that one. In the cap, all right. Yes. This is our last, the way we are now. Well, not many. Well, we, uh, of course, not many. But you can wear uh, re regular street clothes now, is that right? It's a, it's a choice, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have to wear the uh, <coughs> the headdress at all if you don't want to. You call it, what? it's not headdress, what do you call? Veil. The veil. You don't need the veil at all if you don't want to. Okay. No, it's just... So the, the one thing that you do wear, though, is the cross around your neck? Yes. Is that, is that obligatory? This is a part of the habit. Yeah. That's part That's of the part habit. Of it. Okay. So even the though they're in street clothes, oh, yes. mm -hmm. you still wear the oh, cross. Oh, we can wear pin. just a pin. Just a, mm -hmm. one or the other, but pins. that's yeah. the sign of... Yeah. Yeah. And when they pray for you out there, your, their prayers are just as valuable. <laughs> right? Whether you're completely dressed in the habit or not. Did you see the pictures of Sam? Did you go to the second floor? I don't think so. You have all the pictures. You should see that. Okay, well, we'll take a peek at that. You have the whole history. Okay, I'll take a peek at that. The history of our community. The architectural uh, arrangement here, a model of the home as it is now, right? The Overlooking the White Mountain. Yep. This is where we came in, and I think we're over here in the basement now someplace. Yes. Right here. Right. Downstairs, right there. And uh, we were in the, talking to just before lunch, well, I didn't got my automatic on here. Uh, we were in the, next to where those right open here. windows are down below. That's a we talked to porch. several That's of the good. sisters just before lunch. There's an idea right there. What was the original building? The original building was... That there, okay. Yep. This was added by Sister Mary Udil. This was added by Sister Teresa Lugu. Mary Udil was the bursar at that time. Okay. She's the one that modeled the plan. She was the bursar? Yeah, the bursar. And that made, so she's, the, you give her credit for adding that because she was the bursar at the time? Yes, provincial and she's got treasure. The, oh, provincial treasure, okay. Now, just as an example, uh, how many, I think someone said there are about 80 in the United States? Yes. In the order? About 400 in Canada? Yes. Give or take, and maybe seven hundred or more in France in your order, yes. and then you have the additional ones that Sister Lucille mentioned in the other countries. Africans, okay. Brazil. And how many are usually in it in residence here, in the home here? Well, For the about residents, forty. Yeah. How many here? About forty. Yeah, it's all right. Yes. About half of the order in the United States. Mm -hmm. But when we have retreats, so this is overcrowded. Mm -hmm. It's full second floor and you come out onto a screened in porch and then an open porch with some chairs and look at the view as we look out at the White Mountains. Uh, let me get out there because I'm getting a screen. White Mountains of New Hampshire as we sit here in this open porch we're over the entrance that we came in our car is right down below and this is looking, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> north, I guess. The sun, the sun is over to our right, which should be the... Yeah, I'm sorry, we're looking south, I beg your pardon. The sun is over on my right on the west side, so we're looking south. Beautiful area. Convalescence on this floor. And who can't necessarily get down on the first floor can come out here and enjoy. And this is some of the new section you saw in that mock-up. We were down in that window down there. And the archives are right underneath the next two sets of windows. Rose Gillet. And this is her mother. And see, they had some old, um, like, an old building here. And the... the the, the wood hasn't been picked up, had not been picked up. Mm -hmm. And so she says, what do we want to do with this? And she's telling her, oh, we can't go without that. We'll give this to the poor. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. was, this one there. So right. she was visiting the sick. Mm -hmm. And our father, the pastor of that parish, wanted 
to found a community where several girls would get together, teach catechism, and visit the sick. So he came. He comes to see. Okay. And that's 1823. 18. This is an 18. Yes, yeah, so 1823. She made. She made her vows. Okay. Before making her vows. Okay. Two years before. Okay. Okay. Now there she is visiting the sick. Uh -huh. so she's visiting the sick. Okay. She's not a nun yet. She's just. Uh -huh. Okay. So when the sisters now who are leaving teaching going to nursing. Uh, right in still f in her field. Oh very yes, much so. he had asked two things: teach religion and take care of the sick. Okay. And he picked out that girl. Okay. Now this is okay, if we come over here, we can follow you. Okay, my counselor. She went to school with these sisters, daughters of charity, uh, of Saint Vincent de Paul. Okay. And <clears throat> you know, before they before she became a nun. They wanted, uh, well, she became a postulant, she just a little. Mm -hmm. And see, she has something similar to them here, a kerchief and a kerchief there. And mm -hmm. in fact, their novice was dressed just like this before they took, before they made their vows. So she went to their school, and now she became a nun. Now she goes to seek counsels. She mm -hmm. seeks not to see how to uh, organize and how to uh, run a community. Mm -hmm. And she's giving, she's giving all the instructions to this one here. Uh, her name again? Sister, it was Mary, Marie. That right. was her first. She's an angel. Marie, okay. See? Okay, God gave Sister Marie an angel, consolator, uh, consolator, uh -huh. consoling angel. And she's the consoling angel, because she didn't want, you know, she was so humble. She didn't want to become a She didn't want to be the superior, and so on. So mm -hmm. she had, she found all her her strength and her counseling mm -hmm. from the sister. At that time, there were other orders, correct? Oh yes, Lots yes. Lots of orders. Oh yes. And are the, are, are the uh, habits different from order to order? Well, there's something similar, of course. It's a long pleated skirt. Most mm -hmm. of them had that here, mm -hmm. and uh, they had. Well, uh, this. When this coif was the way that they were dressed when she became a nun. Mm -hmm. And here, this is a, like a little, we had a little, um, she was a peasant girl, see? Mm -hmm. And they used to have one, little, something similar but was short. And as uh, the as uh, she entered, well, they had to make it a little bit different. Okay. So they, they, the long yep. wings here. Okay. But each, each different... Each different order. Or order has a different uniform. Oh, oh yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they're not. <coughs> and different colors. Some are brown. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some are gray. Okay. Where's the other ones? Well, this one painted the Sister Raphael in Newport. Sister, she left the community now. The okay. Raphael in Newport. Uh, now this here. See, she just made her vows, and um, this is the bishop that's ordering her. He gives her the obedience where she has to go see. Mm-hmm. And so he, he confirms her in her charge. Uh -huh. See, okay. She was always so humble. And she never thought that she, she didn't want to be the superior. She didn't want to be the one that run the whole thing, the whole uh, community. And because she was so humble. But the bishop told her, now you have to be the first one. And you have to go along with the others, but you have to be the first one. They need a superior. Now, so humble. Sister, you are now, say, in New Hampshire here. Yes. Are you under the uh, rule of the local bishop in any way? No. It's, we are under the rule of our major superiors in France. Okay. But we have to, we, we are under the bishop to a certain extent, uh -huh. because we are in his diocese. I understand. Okay. But he doesn't have anything to do with our regulations. Okay. It's the mother house in France. Okay. Okay. Yes. Isn't that something how they can paint the concept of a yeah. painting and then yeah. put a painting in the painting? We're on the I second can't. floor. Well, Sister Raphael was very, very good. We're getting the history of the order. See, she's, uh, she's almost dying. She's very, very sick. And she's taking, telling them to keep the primitive spirit, the spirit of their holy vocation, to keep the spirit of the community in other ways. See? Mm -hmm. So they're all... It's a nice picture. Very nice. And that was Very just, nice. <coughs> that was in a little book, a little book this way. No kidding. Pictures, just a little bit. Oh, excuse me. 
I would have never thought that she would she was paint able so to paint put this in painting mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a tiny, tiny picture. She took every single little picture of that book. S sister, when you decided to become a an, an a sister, uh, why or how did you decide on the Daughters of Charity rather than another order? Well, I tell you, my first idea was well, I wanted to go to China, see, and then I changed my mind. But I was along many years. I wanted to go be a missionary sister. At that time, we didn't have any missions in Africa, and then. I had a sister there in Newport that, you know, was praying for for me, and she'd say, you know, this is your vocation to come to our community and so on. She we, was already a nun? We were, oh yes. Which, Which one was my sister? Sister Isabella, she was from Newport. Bible. How many did you have? Oh, you mean she wasn't your real sister? No, 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 no. Oh, no, I think if I... was my, my teacher. Your teacher, Newport. yes, yes. And she, she used to talk to us, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't say she was forceful, but she prayed for us very much. She and had that little tack of putting in. Yes. Every one of us r knows exactly what you're talking about. Because we all went through that, especially in the month of May when we had to wear long white stockings. <laughs> <laughs> and they needed a month. There's another one here. Oh, this one here. There. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is the... Uh, okay, this is the Reverend Mother. And this little one is getting on her knees there. I suppose she's giving her advice. Or well, she's trying to convince her that she has, she has to leave and go to the another, another mission. Mm -hmm. But we had blue aprons, and we had this, you know, it's just mm -hmm. exactly the same mm -hmm. thing that was in 1823. Beautiful paintings, aren't they? Oh, and you were still wearing those in 1940. Oh, yeah. Sure. 49. Yeah, we changed in 1959. Huh? We changed in 59. You went to the second one, the we second one in 59? And then the third That's one. That's when my, see, my children and then the grandchildren had the last one. Do you remember you saw Sister Mary? Was yes, yes, we did. Yes, we do remember. Yes, we do remember. Just thought, we just thought right. about right. that. Yes. Right. Oh. This is why they had big eggs for breakfast right here. <laughs> they have four ducks here. You see the benefit of every animal. But these are males. And they've got sheep and they've got some pigs. That's enough. This is Sister Lucille outside. Uh, they, they, they know Lucille. She's the one yeah. who uh, feed them. She's the duck herder. Not only the duck herder. <laughs> you see the lovely flowers out in the yard. We're on the first floor now. And this is that lovely veranda that I was standing on taking pictures of the White Mountains. Right up there. Awfully hard to get this in perspective. It's so big and there's so much of it. The gardening outside. Is this a sister out there? No, it's one of our girls, Antonia. Okay. I saw, I think, in the while we were eating? In the dining room. Yep. She does the cleaning of the infirmary, and in the afternoon she does outside work. Is she here just for the summer? She lives in town, and she this is her job. Uh -huh. Just heard some news. Tell us again. That tree was um, donated by? Bruce Favreau. Father, Father Bruce. Father Bruce. Yes. And it's, um, he gave it to us when it was just uh, one scrawny little um, tree, you know, about uh -huh. five feet tall. And he gave you two, you said there's another one over there? There's another one over there, over but there? it isn't so full because okay. uh, we've had to tra transfer it from where it was planted the first time mm -hmm. because of the road that we built right. in the How driveway. do you keep your driveways cleaned out in the winter? The well, village people? No. The big driveway that you came up the hill, that's the village people who do, does it. And uh, here it's Mr. Mr. Brooks, our maintenance man, that uh -huh. takes care of it early every morning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, does someone come or leave here every day as far as the sisters are concerned? You don't go out every day. Well, almost every day there's some someone sisters that go to the post office. like need a doctor, right? to the doctors mm -hmm. and to do errands downtown. Mm -hmm. Like this afternoon, Sister Marcel has brought a couple sisters to do their shopping. Mm -hmm. So do you ever go on vacation, Sister Lucille? Oh yes, I do. Where could you go nicer than here except home? 
Well, that's, that's where, where you go, go, huh? Go and and then we go to Isla Mott. Uh huh. I go to Isla Mott with Sister yeah. Therese. You have a camp there, Tim right? Her, the, yes. the sisters have a camp and right. push next to the shrine. Right. Another one of my favorites is Father Boucher. Yes. We did a story there with him, and he's a great person. Yes. Well, my biggest surprise was that he was born in that area and went away and came back. Is that right? He's from just a few miles from uh, uh, Alberg. That's right. Yeah, he, that's he right. told us, right. Yeah. Okay, we'll take another break. We would check her flowers. So these are the flowers out in front, up close, beautiful yellow, and the pink. You don't see pink when I'm looking now. And some more yellow. And the gardens. Being taken care of by that young lady right down there. Goldfish in the water here. We can see. Can we see the goldfish? See them swimming around down there. Lambs, getting the lambs out of the garden. The three lambs. They told me their names off camera, but I won't repeat it. It wouldn't be good for some of our president's wives, former president's wives. We're moving on now, uh, the time. It's uh, 2.59, 3 o'clock. We're on our way to Newport, Vermont. We'll talk to a few of the sisters there, and then we're on our way to Champlain. You're watching Hometown Cable. My name is Bob Venn. I've had the camera and the mic, and with the assistance of uh, Doris Picard, uh, Florence Carter, and my wife, Teresa, who have been talking to some of the sisters here at uh, Littleton, New Hampshire, provincial home, the headquarters of the U.S. for the... Daughters of the Charity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Please stay with us. We won't be long. And she went to a Laternal <laughs> carpenter, uh, carpenter um, shop or something. Shop, yeah, or anyway, and she, he, she asked if he knew a Doris Laternal. Oh, yeah. He says, of course, it's my sister. Isn't that a Come small to my house. Yeah. She was married. She, she went to New York for four years. Yeah. Then she uh, came back to Burlington and she married her brother's friend. And she ended up going to back to New York, and then she is now in Connecticut, and she's coming. Mm -hmm. Isn't that she something? Will come with mm -hmm. she's coming. She was so pleased, and I just got in touch with her because I was having such a hard time to find her, you know. Did you get the Scallons? No, they're Beatrice? passed away. Or they both the, the two are twins? That's it. Yeah, that's, what, that's what they told me. Mildred and Lafayette told me that. Yes, me but you know, they were the first graduating class. Who? <laughs> Border. Probably why. <laughs> One of them have? married, and she had two daughters, yeah. Welch, mm -hmm. and Beatrice and Bernice. And they were born from St. Mary's. They're coming. Yes. They graduated from St. Mary's. So they'll be here. The, I mean, you mean, so you how about yes. Mary Beatrice Welch? She's coming here? Yeah. I don't know where she is. I, they find her? I, don't I don't know. So. She, I just had my class to send, and that's the only one that <coughs> I was missing in my class, and I was glad that, oh, I see. You that each took our own classes. Each mm -hmm. year took mm -hmm. care of the We had students. one person that took they care of all the students. That was a good way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Smartly. Yeah. Wonderful. Right. I took care of 1929 to 1923. Sister, you mentioned Leona something. What was the last name? Mm -hmm. She was thinking of Leona Blaine. Leona Blaine. Right. That was a it year is. after. It is Leona Blaine. Yeah. She lived in French Village, I think. Yeah. She married a national and she lives in Schenectady, somewhere around there. You but did she, get her? She's not coming. No. Right. Yes, but she's not coming. She's not so, coming. No. I've only got 16 from 1929 to 1933. Where did she live? This, uh, Schenectady? Oh, that's pretty far off. I'm not very bad. It's only three hours. How many did you get from 29 to? 43, 16. That's wonderful. Mm. That's good. Was Leona Rita a Stone's sister? Rita Blaine, uh, Leona Blaine. Oh, I think. 
my sitting there. Yes, Gerald's Gerald's <laughs> sister. Where you want? May no, I? Gerald, no, may. Gerald Blaine's sister. Oh, uh, just calls. These new faces you see are the sisters at uh, Newport. We have four of the sisters here at Newport who formerly were at Champlain, including Sister Bernadette, who's, who's waltzing by right here. <laughs> Going to find her own Very chair. Yeah. Going to get. <laughs> no, this is not mine. This is not you. All right. So Sister that Bernadette, who was there at Champlain for for years, and Sister. Mary Amelia. Mary Amelia. She says that very strong. See, I right. want you to know Mary Amelia <laughs> and sister Leo Paul. Leo, Leo Paul. Yeah. Uh, and your name now? You got your own name now. Sister Beatrice Shala. Uh, Shala. 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 All right, and. That's sister Anna. And uh, sister Janet. My name now. Okay, you worked in the kitchen for a long time at Champlain. Yes. Now I don't work here. Much. You don't work as much now. No, no, not much. You were in Champlain, you said, from about 1941. 1941 to 1951. Uh -huh. years. And during that same time, sister was there also. Yes. For some of those years. We were sacristan together. Okay, you got there in about 1940, 41 to. 1940. 40 to 47. About. Yes. And you were in charge of some borders, huh? You worked with the borders. Yes, the girls' borders. How many did you have? How many did you have? About oh, thirty, thirty-one. I bet that wasn't always fun. Yes. Was it always fun? Oh yes. It was always. Yes, they were very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I liked them. You did, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they kept you hopping, huh? Yes. I was happy, and I was taking care of them when they were sick. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, I, I enjoyed my then. stay in, in uh, Champlain uh -huh. very much. Did you make sure they wrote home at, uh, once a week or something? Did they had yes. to write a letter? You made sure? Yes, they were writing to their mm -hmm. parents. Right. What did you do, sister, when they were in school all day? Uh, you had was, some time off? I was doing sewing. Sewing. All right. For them or for the other sister? For them and for the sister. Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. Did they always thank you when you were, when you did the good job? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You're being nice. <laughs> they were they were quite happy, you know. <laughs> right. So now you are. Did you say semi-retired here? You you still do some sewing? Uh, I, I'm not. Semi-retired. Yeah. Yeah. Quite busy okay. all day. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, still seamstress for the uh -huh. sisters, and uh, I'm uh, in charge of the dining room. Uh huh. So it keeps me quite. Well, busy. they must be a lot of friends because they want you to be good to them in the dining room. <laughs> I like that. You like that, oh yes. <laughs> now, sister, you're laughing over here, sister Anna. But how many sisters are here now in the building? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen, huh? 15, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, being cooked, it must have been good to you too. Yeah. Did you did you do favors for some of them once in a while? Oh yeah. Yet, you know, mm -hmm. Do you make a special menu for those who need it? Yeah, uh, those yeah, who are special when you have a feast uh -huh. or something special. Yeah. For the right. Sister. When you were at St. Mary's, did they serve lunches to the children? Yeah. Did you also cook that also? Oh yeah. That's where she was. was That's where you were. When you we were the whole building, you know. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Do you remember some of the people in the community that were good to you or uh, you, you were friends with? Do you remember any names? Uh, we are the, we are got a lot of sisters. We are the friends. I, that's a big question. I'll let you think yeah. about that. Eh? <laughs> let you think about that. In the meantime, we'll come back to, what was yeah. that name again? What was that name again? Mary Amelia. That's right. That's it. Okay. So what did you do at St. Mary's sister? I was teaching. You were teaching? teaching. Were you also the principal? Oh, later, yes. Well, later on, yes. huh? And I what started by teaching what, what um, Plain High School. Mm -hmm. What were you teaching? Mm -hmm. Mathematics. Mathematics. Geometry. Yes. Geometry. And all <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, those say all of those. All of those. What years were you there, sister? I was there from 1929 to 1955. Oh my gosh! You were there a long, long time. Twenty-six years. You found a home there. I did. Huh? <laughs> yes. I really enjoyed it too. Where was your home originally? I was from Altona, New York. Altona, New York? Yes, mind you. <laughs> They're part of our viewing audience. <laughs> then we moved to Vermont. Okay. You want to tell us your maiden name? Uh, your maiden name. You're not married. 
Lafreniere. Lafreniere? Lafreniere. F-O-U-R. Lafreniere. Lafreniere. Okay. Lafreniere. Yeah, Lafreniere. Good old Irish name. <laughs> 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 Did you go to school in Altona at all? Um, I was at school as a boarder in Champlain. But I mean in Altona? Did you ever go to school in Altona? No. Never did? No. And then you boarded in Champlain? That's right. And you got even with the sisters by becoming one of them? That's right. Is that what you did, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Who influenced you the most for that? Pardon? Who was the biggest influence to make you a sister? Sister Mary Rosalie, my that's, teacher. That's nice that you can remember. Yeah, she was our English teacher, a wonderful mm -hmm. person. Did you ever serve with her later in the same school? Were you ever in the same school system with her later? No, she died soon after oh. I entered the university. Okay. Yes, so Mr. Mm -hmm. Do Are there certain sisters that had more influence on girls to become sisters than others? Well, that's hard telling. Uh -huh. well, that's quite personal between the teacher and okay. the yeah. And the person. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to okay. you know, right. yeah. name anybody. <laughs> oh, I didn't want you to name anybody. Okay. Well, I didn't want you to name anybody. No. Okay. No, no, I don't I'm want you. I'm sure there have been. Uh -huh. In fact, I think almost all the teachers, one time or other, mm -hmm. has influenced directly or indirectly, I think. Uh -huh. Did you, uh, how long were you principal? Yeah. Were you principal in 1948 you and 49? In 47. Oh. 46. 47? I must, I must have been there from 45. I think about 10 years. You were principal when that young lady right there was in school? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yes, there, Mrs. Van, Mrs. Van, yes. Was, she was. About 10 years. Was, was, yeah, so did you have her in your office a lot when you, when she, when you were principal? <laughs> you can tell the truth. We all <laughs> waxed the floor. She <laughs> <was>. <laughs> you what? struck the right one. I struck a good one? I know that. I know. No, I and again, everybody reminds me too, especially her. She reminds me a lot, this lady right here. We all wax the floors, though. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we even we used to go over to the convent and help wax those I floors with the bread rack. <laughs> with the bread, bread, um, bread bags. Oh, and the old yeah. fashioned yeah. wax. Remember that? You remember that? And then they used to tell us to take our shoes off to shine them, and then my mother had to <laughs> rub the wax off our socks. <laughs> we all thought we were going to be sisters. <laughs> okay. Sister Bernadette, how long were you in Champlain? I really want to know. I really want to know. Well, you were born in Champlain. That's just like right? You did. But did you teach some in Champlain? I never taught in Champlain. Never did. No. But you were born in Champlain. Yes, I didn't start teaching. Yeah. Like that. Yes. Right. No, but you were born there. And, and you mentioned before your father was Abel Glode. And your mom? Mamie. Okay. Mary. Mamie Glode. Uh-huh. And uh, you became a sister. And what did you teach, sister? Well, I taught a lot of subjects my first years. Uh, uh -huh. I don't remember. I can't tell you all of that. Uh -huh. But then I specialized in English. Mostly high school then? Yes. You did, huh? English. English. It's a little bit tougher when you get in high school there. No? It's fun. It's yeah. interesting. They tell me that the low grades are a little easier. Well, yeah, you can stick them in the corner if you want. <laughs> you would never do that. Oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> Did you ever fail anybody when in, who's a senior? Did I ever what? Uh, have a senior uh, who didn't do good and you wouldn't let him graduate? Not that I remember. You don't remember ever doing that, huh? No. This year in Champlain there were some. Uh, yes, there were about 20 or 30 that did not get their diploma. Mm -hmm. And particularly in English, I understand. You know, they're making it tougher. They, they should be buckling down, you know. She graduated from St. Mary's. She graduated from St. Mary's, uh, yeah. 1929. The name was Glode. Right. Yep. G L A U. G L A U D E. Right. The real way. The real way. That's Alfred Glode spells his that way, I think. I don't know Alfred. Uh, I don't know who his father was. Do you know? Uh, Florence? Yeah, she And Teresa was another one? Oh, Teresa Glode was. Teresa was Ralph's. Not that Glode. Oh, oh she spells hers G L A U D E also. Yes, Yeah, Ralph. Yeah they, yeah, they spell that way too. All right. Uh, Morgan. So where did you spend most of your teaching career? Right here. Right here? In Newport? Yes, sir. I met some of your people 
who w went to school here today over in uh, Littleton. Some of the sisters who had been oh, yes. went to school here. Yes. Okay. So well, you're going to be at the party, uh, for the 8th and the 9th at Champlain? Well, I hope so. You hope to be there. You're planning on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll write it down in my little black book. You, you, so you won't forget it? <laughs> How could, if anybody goes, I hope it. I hope they're going to bring you? Yeah. Well, I hope they're going to bring you, yes. They're, they're going to bring you? Yeah, they said yes. Yeah. Who's going to be the driver of that trip? Are you, oh, you're going to be the driver? I don't drive anymore. You don't? No, I used to, but I don't anymore. Who's going to drive you over there? Uh, sister Lillian, <coughs> Sister... Um, Sister Lounge, Sister Lounge, and Sister Lorraine. Okay. <coughs> now, we understand that there's another sister who is in Burlington today who we're not seeing and can't talk to. What was her name? Sister Geneva. 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 And how long was she in Champlain? Any idea? Quite a few she years. was there? Maybe, uh, oh, yes, she went Eight there. or ten years, maybe more. Yeah. Oh, yes. And do you know what she taught? In a high school. In the high school? Yeah. You remember Sister Geneva, Teresa? Sister Jane Francis? Mm -hmm. Jane Francis. Jane, 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 Jane Francis? Oh, that's her name then. Oh, yeah. Jane Francis. Jane Francis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's in Burlington. She's in Burlington, uh, visiting. She used to like Champlain a lot. Uh -huh. We're sorry we missed her. Yeah. Will she uh, be coming to Champlain? She was, she was sorry not to be here so, today. Well, we'll see her maybe on the, the 9th and the 10th. No, okay. Crazy. You oh, think yeah. she's coming? Is there anybody else here that we... Well, of course, Sister Elaine is in oh, France yeah. for a period of time, yeah. right? Yeah, she'll and be coming. Is there anybody else that we that is here that we should have oh, seen and who are out today? Sister Robert. Sister Robert. Yeah. None of them. Sister Robert? She used to be in Champlain. Now it's Sister Jacqueline. Her name is Sister Jacqueline. Right. You remember She's Sister gone Robert. in her family. Yes, I do remember Sister, yeah, Sister Robert. Yeah, yeah. Where is she today? In her family trip in yeah. Sherbrooke. Oh, that's good. Yeah. In Sherbrooke. Yeah. And you are going on your family trips within a couple of weeks, right? I or three went weeks? Two weeks. I went two weeks. Two weeks. I just came last week. Sunday. And that'll be in Sherbrooke, you told yeah. me? She just got back. She oh, you just got, got back. back. I'm the one that's you're going, going Thursday. And you're yeah. going to Magog and Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke. Right. I have some relative in both places. Uh -huh. You look forward to that, I take it, huh? Yeah. You see a lot of relatives in one place? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. i got about six minutes left on the tape. <laughs> and uh, we're in Newport. And if you wonder what that lake is, right out there... Is that Mentha Magog? That's right. Yeah. Lake Mentha Magog. And it's it's a main part of this community. And it's been raining again since we left Littleton. We had two different storms on the way here. This is the is this the community room? Yes. Sir. This yes. is your community room. Back <laughs> and uh, see all the nice rockers that they have. And we want to mention something special about those four rockers right there because someone told me that where those rockers came from. Who was it that told me? Was it Sister... Um, you told me, Mary Amelia, you told me about those four rockers. Tell us about those four rockers. How did they get here? Well, the former pastor, Father Davignon, at Christmas time, he'd... Uh, Give the sisters uh -huh. a chair for Christmas. But after a few years, he was named Pastor Elsie. <laughs> and that was the end of our Christmas gift. He probably <laughs> asked for a transfer. <laughs> the, the, they're not really rockers, they're gliders. Somebody show me how those work. Look at that. See, and you've got a gliding footstool, see? See how nice that works? I'll hold it if you want to turn. Very nice. Yeah, they do. Work, they work very nice. You tell me they're made here in uh, Newport. In Newport? Right here in Newport. Uh -huh. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, ladies. You're watching Hometown Cable. My name is Bob Venn. We've been in Littleton for the first hour and a half of this program. And for the last 15 minutes or so, we've been here in Newport. And I can see my tape is running out right now. So we'd like to thank you all for watching Hometown Cable. And if you ever get over to either Littleton or to Newport and you know any of these ladies, they'd be glad to see you. 
If you can't get over it, drop them a Christmas card, drop them a birthday card. They don't want to be reminded about their birthdays, but just tell them if you, you send birthday cards twice a year. <laughs> tell them Bob said, then told you to send a card. They always be welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies. Just because I say goodbye don't mean I'm really closing out. Sister Leo Paul said there's somebody else. And who was that that was over there? Sister Solange. She's gone for a meeting in Champlain, I think. In Champlain? I think so. Okay. What was her name when she was in Champlain? She was Sister Saint Germain. Okay, so we got to get those names right because they won't know who she is. Mary Saint Germain. Okay. And you expect her over there on the reunion date? Yes. Okay. Okay. We're going to leave again. This time we're going to leave for good. Thank you very much again, sisters. The community room in Newport. So I'm going to sell the tapes.